Hello and welcome to Uncovered, the podcast with your host, Jason Irving. Join me in a journey to understand what's truly happening in your world and the world around you. This is not about how you're living life on the surface. It's about what's truly driving you from under the covers. I'm going to take you on a journey to deeply uncover the reason why you are here. The ultimate purpose in your problems and the way that they have shaped your life up until now. See, I believe you have a purpose and your problems are the highway towards ultimate realization of that journey towards freedom and the reconnection of your true self. I've been told I have a different spin on most things and I'll be giving you my understanding of life, love and what we're all here for, purpose. To get the best out of this podcast, drop what you already know so you can discover what's beyond you. So join me, let's play this game of life and bring on liberation, transformation and change. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome to Uncovered. This is probably one of the most uncomfortable podcasts that I'm going to be doing. Uh, I was chatting to a person who's a bit of a podcast expert and he said, make sure you tell your story in one of your podcasts. And so um, it's something that you should do and um, I'm going to do that today. So get a little bit of an idea about who I am and what I'm about and how I have gotten to where I am today. So I'm going to start with... um, you know where we start in the beginning which is the childhood so I was I I had this sixth sense or this understanding about people um, from a very very early age and I never used to say anything so I used to see issues with people and all sorts of things going on with people that I just sort of knew what was going on with uh, people around me like my fourth grade teacher I could see he was getting picked on and laughed at um, and being talked about um, quite often by his uh, by the other teachers and the principal and I could see that there were major problems going on for him and a lot of sadness and all sorts of things psychologically and I was in year four just going I know why he's doing exactly what he's doing the way he's communicating to us and what was going on so but I didn't really know what to do with it because I was you know seven eight years old having having this thing that now I know is a gift back then it was sort of a little bit of a torture zone so as I was going through school, I never, ever, ever felt like I fitted in. So I was not really good at school. Um, to be honest, I, I, well, in lots of ways, I didn't apply myself. So uh, I never thought I was smart enough, so I didn't put the work in. Uh, and I validated my lack of self-esteem by not putting the work in. And every time that I um, put any sort of effort in, it wouldn't actually work anyway. I was told by all the teachers that I was never going to amount to much, and never going to get anywhere. So one of the biggest moments, we all have these milestone moments where um, I was uh, humiliated in front of everyone in my classroom in year six and I spent from year seven to to year 12 basically going sick bay so I wouldn't have to do a talk in front of the class. And now, you know, if you're watching this, this is a massive thing for me to even be doing podcasts and to expose what I do in the world. I've written a book and all sorts of things that I've done. Um, now, I never thought I would have, would have gotten over myself simply because of how I felt about myself at school. Um, feeling like the, the drop kick in school. This is an Aussie term for loser. And, um, you know, during that time I also had a lot of suicidal thoughts so I used to go to bridges and every time I'd go to a bridge I'd get uh, a part of my mind was saying just jump just leave just go it'll be easier that way it'll be quick it'll be easy it'll you won't have to do this anymore so I used to put my hands under the railing to make sure I wouldn't actually take that leap so anytime there was a um, uh, I was actually quite scared of heights and it was actually not because of the heights, it was because I was scared of the uh, of the steel springs that I had in my legs that wanted to just jump and get myself out of this life as humanly possibly quickly as I could. So no one knew anything about this. This is something that I'm sharing with you. This is something that I've shared in the academy. Um, only in the academy over just the last couple of years, I, I shared it um, initially in 2019. So never ever said anything to anyone about how those thoughts were running 
and what was going on in my life until um, you know I was almost 50. So imagine what that's like and usually the people like me are the ones that would be taking that leap from, from um, the rooftop and, and killing themselves simply because a lot of the people who uh, choose to go and get help are the ones that actually quite often survive. The ones that say nothing are the ones that disappear off the planet pretty quickly. So I did something really dumb. I followed my brother's footsteps and he became an IT programmer, he was earning a lot of money. I didn't know what to do, so I decided to be an IT programmer as well. And that sort of really did my self-esteem in because you know he was getting HDs and distinctions while I was getting passes and credits. And the reason why is because I was spending a lot of time uh, enjoying myself at the pub. So I didn't put a lot of effort into uni. I used to steal assignments and all sorts of things to get myself through uni as opposed to actually do university properly. But what I realized by taking someone else's work and improving it, as one example I had, I got the top mark in the class in my, one of my university assignments simply because I stole someone else's assignment who got um, 50 out of 20, I got 19 and a half out of 20. So I was able to take someone else's work and improve it. And that's what I did in the IT profession. I was actually quite good at doing that um, style of work by grabbing someone else's information and improving it and making it better. So I got my career in the, I, in the IT industry and I had a very low level self-esteem still and I was still you know, trying to find my own feet um, and, you know, and there were people who were so much smarter than me in the numbers game. And that's what I was playing, a numbers game. So again, I validated myself on, on what I saw in others and felt like I was the stupidest kid on the block. And, you know, I've been going through, I still go through that um, same sort of feeling and thoughts now to this very day, even though I have a wealth of experience and what I do is what other people say is absolutely phenomenal and mind-blowing. I've had people say I'm the uh, Einstein of emotions. I've got this ability to understand people and all of those sorts of things while I'm still thinking, hey, maybe I'm a little bit of a shit show. So, um, you know, I ended up going to uh, Canada in 1997 just to go on a working holiday visa with my partner at the time. And uh, that was when I started having a turning point in my life. So I went and saw um, some therapists. I saw this, I had a bit of a sore knee when I was jogging with my six foot six um, mate who was um, obviously a lot better at running than me because he's a lot taller. He had a lot more, he had a lot more, um, less leaps to go than I did every time we walked or, or ran. And um, so my back, my knee was getting sore. So I went and saw, uh, there was a huge list of things um, on this um, door and I decided, well, I'll go and do this. I saw chiropractic, that's the only word that I knew. So I went in there, what I was thinking was chiropractic, so I was getting, and I got an emotional release. And I ended up, um, going to see them just before I went on an amazing uh, trip down the west coast of America on my bicycle and basically I realized I wanted to become a healer and um, so as we were going down the west coast uh, I saw an astrologer and the astrologer basically confirmed everything that I was going to become a healer. He also warned me on his tape and said be careful of the people that you meet in 2000. Um, I completely forgot about that but anyway um, 1990 um, 19, 1999 or 1998, I ended up getting married um, to the person I was partnered with and decided that we would head over to Canada and go and work for the people who did the healing work with me or what I thought was going to happen. So they said, come and work for us. And I was like, okay, no worries. I went over there on the proviso that I might be able to get sponsored by them and all of those sorts of things. And so I went and um, they told me I had to go and do a week intensive to do all my, in quotes, work and healing. And I thought that I needed to sort every single thing out in my life when I went and went went to see them so I had this idea that every single thing um, in my world I needed to fix all at once to become the best healer I could be probably one of the biggest mistakes that you can make don't ever do that if you're if you're if you're watching this or, sorry, or if you're listening uh, listeners don't ever think that you have to have everything sorted right on the get-go because um, it did me in so anyway I did this week intensive 
uh, with them. And after I did the week intensive, I went and hung out with my friends and um, smoked some marijuana, which was not, that's what I, I was smoking marijuana at the time, on and off, not, not lots. And that sent me on a big wild goose chase with my brain. So um, I went and had another week with them. So I ended up spending around about uh, 14000 dollars with this group um, over a two week period so they really know, knew how to um, take money from uh, a very naive human or a very naive pair of pair of people so I went and had another week my wife had a week with them as um, a, as well at the time and um, you know after that week I felt really really good I had an amazing experience uh, which I won't talk about now, but I had this amazing experience, and I thought, okay, now I'm now I'm okay. So I decided, um, you know, to I really had that passion to to work for these people, and I did another week of training with them, and during that week, um, things started to go pear shaped, and to cut it short, I ended up um, basically breaking my brain, and I ended up in the psych ward and it was probably the um, most difficult uh, experience of my life. I, I was in this place, I didn't know whether I was going to be able to get out because you know you watch the movies of the psych ward, I had, the, the, I had blue um, paper shoes and the, the, the pyjama top and bottom on basically um, felt like I was an inmate and I didn't know whether I was ever going to get out of the psych ward alive. Uh, I was in there for basically two weeks and it was the longest two weeks of my life. So uh, after about two or three days, uh, two or three or four days, I started getting my mind back and realizing that, um, you know, what did I need to do to get out of this place? So during the time that I was in the psych ward, I managed to go and um, Talk my 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 wife or my wife at the time. Um, I'm divorced now. Um, to her, I we he, she managed to get me um, back with the company that I was working for when I did my working holiday visa, and they got me a job working at the workers' compensation board in Canada. So I I ended up. Um, going for an interview so they gave me a leave I had leave passes in my second week so I went for an interview for um, a job while I was still in the psych ward and I got that job and I had to convince them that um, I had a job and I started on the Monday and they had to let me out of the psych ward otherwise I wouldn't have had my job so from being in the psych ward on the Sunday on the Monday morning, I arrived in my contractor's beautiful suit and tie and pants and ended up working for this mob. Uh, and it was the first time actually that I was given a bit of a bad review as, a, as an IT programmer. I was doing really, really well. It was just where I was at the time. Every single thing had fallen apart in Canada where I thought the you know the chasing my dreams and everything that I wanted being a healer uh, was going to be exactly what I needed moving countries and creating a completely new new life was going to make me feel really really able and I was going to lead my life towards freedom also during this time when I was in Canada um, the the people that I was working um, with the, the therapist basically um, made me believe that my family were bad people and they were doing the wrong thing by me and you know i found out later on when i was in australia that these guys were getting sued by by people for false memories i didn't want they wanted me to actually be part of a jury and i was way too broken or didn't want to didn't want to go um, and experience and relive my experience in Canada to actually vouch that these people were not good people. So here's a little bit of advice, listeners. Just make sure when you're getting help, make sure you get the right help. Do 
check in, you know, especially if you're really, really lost and you don't know where to go. Because one thing I know from my own experience is not all therapists or helpers are actually balanced. So I found out that um, the group of people uh, were in men's groups, uh, they didn't really like men and they had major, major issues that they were dealing with. Um, so one of the things I want to um, understand um, that I learnt from this is how not to treat people. So it's really important, this is that if you if you want to learn to, you know, work with people and mentor people and coach people, you have to really be mindful of um, people's mental well-being because people may look fine on the outside but not, may not be so good on the inside. And I've been a, I used to be the the therapist 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 so I used to have a lot of therapists come in to see me uh, when I was a therapist uh, over the years and I you know I ended up um, realizing there was a lot of stuff that people hadn't sorted out in their world while they were working on um, people's stuff so you know everything fell apart in Canada you know I went back to the IT industry um, the healing gig just didn't work and um, it was all really 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 hard so one of the biggest challenges that I had um, when I came back to Australia was how I felt because I know a lot of people knew that I'd been in the psych ward and all my friends that were in Canada they didn't really say anything to me so I felt um, a little bit isolated and it was like one of those no-go zones so here I was I'd, I'd come out of the psych ward and I didn't want and I didn't really want to speak about it either so there was this sort of like ghost moment. I knew, I knew people were talking about me, which is sort of awful knowing that people are talking about you, people look at you a certain way, and, um, and you know, people, I didn't, I, I didn't really know what to think, and I didn't really know what, what people were thinking of me as well. I didn't know what to say, and it was a really, really tough part of my life. But one thing that was really, really lucky that I had was I moved um, with my with my partner at the time, my wife at the time, I moved into uh, the bu a bush um, farm, which was just out of Canberra, and it, it basically healed me. I was very very lucky. I got to meditate and spend time with wombats and eagles and um, echidnas and lots of birds, um, and it was just a, a, a beautiful healing place. Australia is one of the most healing places to be in. I, I was very very lucky, and because of my connection. I was able to pat wild wombats and you know I had experience with the kangaroos that you'd never experience. I got to pat an echidna, um, come, came right up to me. I had lizards coming up to me and sunbaking with me because I still had this want and desire to actually become a healer and a therapist no matter what had happened. And you wouldn't give your left arm for my story. It was very, very traumatic and very, very difficult. Um, I still have this want, this why and I wanted to help people and um, you know, I, I ended up, I did go crazy. So um, it was a very, very difficult uh, situation that I put myself in. And I don't blame the people who um, helped get me there. I'm, I'm actually quite grateful to them for actually helping me get into the psych ward because I know the ins and outs of a brain. I knew exactly what I did uh, to break it and I knew and I know exactly how to get out of it. So I had a lot of people come and tell me, hey, I've been in the psych ward and all of this sort of stuff. I never said anything to them, but they, the model wasn't working for them. They weren't getting any help and I was the answer because I was coming from the inside out and I knew how, um, how delicate the brain is um, and how easy it is for you to actually end up um, feeling unstable mentally. So I decided, right, I still want this thing. It was 2000, 2000 was the year I broke my brain and it was a really, really tumultuous and difficult experience for me um, and I still wanted it. So I got, got home and I ended up doing a massage therapy course. So I thought I'd do something um, more physical to get into the energetic work. Um, that I wanted to do. I still wanted to do the healing and all of those sorts of things, but I thought I'd um, do some learning with something a little bit more mechanical. So by the time 2004, 2000, 2004 came, I ended up transitioning into 
myself becoming a healer and I taught my first ever Reiki course. So I did a, quite a few courses, a bit of a course junkie at that time, trying lots and lots of things. And um, I managed to get there. There was, there was this, still this thing, right? There was still this thing um, going over in my head. What if people know that I went crazy? Who would want to see and get help from a crazy man. So every time someone told me that I was brilliant, that I was able to help them to the nth degree when no one else could, inside of me I still felt a huge amount of shame. And um, it was awful. It was awful feeling. So anytime someone said I was great, I felt shame and I'd say, I'd have to turn it around um, to them and basically say, no, you did a great job, that was all about you until around about 2003, 2004, people started picking on me and having a go at me and, and telling me that uh, I needed to take responsibility for the brilliance that I was providing because some of the experiences that people were having, you know, reversing, um, you know, people were having cancer and not being, um, and not having it anymore. I had people who were told they couldn't get pregnant. I could help them um, create um, a, a viable pregnancy and all of those sorts of things. So I ba became the baby whisperer. I was known for, you know, fixing frozen shoulders in an hour without actually having to do what all the mechanical people did. I was able to sort lots and lots of things out really, really quickly by understanding the psychology of the body. And all the gifts that I had open uh, when I was in the psych ward was all too much, right? Telepathy, the ability to read people to understand how they're feeling. I have all of those gifts open to me now, but I can choose them. And this is why I set up my academy. Um, so. You know, 2007, 2008 came, and I, you know, I ended up divorcing um, or separating from my from my partner, which is again a really hard um, situation in my life. I, I was depressed for a couple of years, and no one knew. I was just had a really good face on, and um, you know, it was a really difficult time. And I understood, you know, we um, I took my ex partner through the ringer. Um, by taking her over to Canada, and um, you know, she she was out of control. Um, in her own way simply because she had to support someone who had lost control you know and we we fell out of love basically and I made the call um, to end it but really we we our our relationship was pretty dusted in 2000 and and the cool part about this is that you know um, we have this beautiful child named Jasmine and um, we both uh, really love her and we've created something absolutely magnificent out of our relationship that we have. I never give a day up for, for anything um, in the world um, if I didn't have my beautiful daughter in my world. So, you know, 2008 comes along and this is when also I started sharing my own techniques. It was when you know, people were starting to say to me, you know, what are you doing as a healer? You're not doing just Reiki. What are you actually up to? And I, I was spinning uh, sacred geometry shapes, which is what I do with my academy, uh, use symbology to help people change. And um, I was basically using all of these shapes within the body and helping people have miraculous changes, but I was way too scared to actually share anything. But I gained the courage in 2008 after numerous sessions um, with people and I started sharing my own techniques and sharing my own way in which I understood the world because I was looking at books and they just didn't make sense to me. Um, a lot of the books that I was reading, that you know, they were hierarchy uh, emotions, saying love is up here and anger's down here, and I just, every time I read a book, it just didn't make any sense. But uh, I, I didn't have the courage to step up and and say what I thought. And so, in on the tenth of the tenth, two thousand and ten, I met I met this beautiful woman who happens to be my wife Anya, and um, she's been an amazing catalyst. Uh, we ended up. Um, having a, a very old-fashioned dating. We were messaging each other, sort of, like would have been letters back in the old day, but we were messaging each other on, on Gmail Messenger at the time. Um, there was no Facebook Messenger at that time, and we were basically um, connecting with each other every day, and I invited her to come to Australia, and uh, in the five weeks that she was here, she came when her birthday was on, I asked her to marry me, and um, um, and um, you know, we've been married ever since. And the, the coolest thing is, um, you know, having that experience where, um, 
I now have a partner that is wanting and pushes me to my limits and says, you can do this, you can do that, you can do this. And um, so I was getting a little bit bored as a healer. You know, I, I, was, I, I was finding um, that I was saying the same things to people over and over again and um, you know, there was nothing um, new that was going on. But I still had this problem. Right? My major problem was my shame about the psych ward moment and who, who was, how was I going to, uh, to break this and actually evolve myself into something bigger if I couldn't actually let anybody know what had happened. Even though I knew there were a lot of people that did know, a lot of the people that I was helping didn't. So I, I ran this uh, secret group um, called the Diamonds and basically what I did in that group was I um, was sharing techniques and, uh, and all of these things to help people go hidden. And I decided one day that I would share my story about what happened in 2000. And I told everyone that I, would, I was going to share and I was expecting maybe one or two people to arrive. Um, you know, the, the class was, uh, I was going to do this at, at six o'clock and my usual class was starting at seven o'clock and I said, look, if you want to arrive and find out my story, uh, come along. And basically everyone arrived early and they were sitting waiting. And I was just shitting myself. I was like, oh my God, here I am going to share my story and maybe all of these guys will never ever see me again. And so I shared my story around my cycloid moment and gave people some, you know, some details about things that had happened and, you know, the journey that I was on during that time um, and lots of instances that had happened when I was in the psych ward, which was pretty hard. And um, lo and behold, they actually loved me even more. And I had a few people actually get me to the side and say to me, hey, Jason, I really appreciate what you said just then because I've been in the psych ward too. So there were three people that were in that room that got me around the corner and said I'd been there too. So um, I know what it is to have uh, mental health issues. You know, I had suicidal thoughts uh, when I was a teenager and a young adult. I've been in the psych ward and um, felt completely ashamed by not being uh, courageous enough to tell my story and tell it anyone because I know one of the biggest fears that people have in life is going crazy um, and I think one of the biggest fears is sharing what has really happened in your life and the struggles that you've had um, to overcome and what I'm realizing now after um, sharing what I shared around about 2013 I think it was that I shared it 2012 somewhere around there the actual feeling that I got from other people was a sense of reverence and they, they really cared and loved for me. Their love for me was even greater than, the, um, than what I ever thought I could imagine. So listeners, if you're in that place where you have felt mentally unstable and you've, you've not known how to speak to anyone, I know what that feels like. You know, I, I felt ashamed, um, isolated. I isolated myself. I didn't know how to get the support and you know I could have been a statistic um, and I, I'm, I'm very very grateful to every single client that came my way because I, I, I truly believe if I didn't end up being a therapist I think the people who uh, I helped actually saved my life um, to, be, to be honest and that's not dramatic I really believe that um, if I hadn't have gotten that help um, I think that consumption of those thoughts and the shame I wouldn't have been able to get over there and I'm so grateful to the Diamonds group that um, they helped me heal a great deal and made me realize that if I had have shared this earlier there's always hindsight right if I had shared this earlier maybe um, I wouldn't have felt this shame for so long because shame can be debilitating uh, what I've got is an amazing you know I've got a podcast around shame about what it does and uh, if you want to watch that and chase that up you can uh, because I have a very different understanding around shame now because it brings out your best you.
And what that did that day is it brought out, uh, liberated me the moment I voiced uh, my pain and suffering um, with a group of people and this is what I'm doing now. So I'm hoping that my story, and this is what I was encouraged to do today, was um, that my story can encourage you to, to know that no matter what happens in your life, no matter how bad it might seem, that if you feel that you have something to give and you have something to share, yes, you will fall over. Yes, you will scrape your arms. Yes, it will be difficult. The thing is, you've got to give it a try because otherwise you'll be left wanting, you'll live a life of regret and you'll end up feeling really, really stuck for the rest of your life. So it was around about, I guess, 2016 uh, when my wife Anya, well 2015 my wife Anya went to a course with one of my, uh, our good friends Julie and basically um, she went away for the weekend and um, you know I was looking after, after our um, beautiful little humans and she came back and said you need to go and do this and I was like do what? So I met these two guys and the names Marcus and Andy and the they basically uh, got me into um, you know, sharing my magic and I was getting a bit bored with what I was doing as a therapist so I thought well okay so I jumped on board with these guys and I went to Hawaii and um, the start of what they were doing was sharing how to write a book and I was just like write a book? I never thought I would ever write a book. So I ended up um, over three days uh, all doing a writing a book basically getting a book done and getting everything ready to to do it it was 2016 when i did it and it took me until 2021 to get it published because i was too scared and uh, i didn't have enough courage to actually put it out there but one of my good friends linda helped me edit it and i got it out there and it's out there now it's called from broken to breakthrough and again i was no good at school i was no good at writing um, and who, if someone told me at high school that you were going to write um, a bestseller book, um, I would have laughed in their face. But I have a bestseller book on Amazon, and it's amazing um, that um, you know I can put the the link in the show notes um, if you want to you want to grab it. That you know the most important thing. Um, it's not really about the book. Is thinking about where I got to. Um, so I ended up. You know, I got this book done and I was still a healer and um, they were convincing me to actually put a program out there and start sharing my magic. So I, I built a program called The Breakthrough and um, you know I started um, on a different program uh, um, from these guys. I left these guys and jumped on another one and uh, they convinced me to create a year program. I was just like, oh my God how can I create a year program? So I did. Um, I just followed the directions and created a menu and in 2019 in February I built the Wellness Breakthrough Academy. And basically what I do now is I share all the techniques that I used to do as a healer in a really constructive, really logical and really um, focused way to help people become mentors. And so I never thought like I was the dunce at school and now I'm teaching people to become better people and I'm using all the magic that um, people call crazy um, um, from my crazy psych ward moment so I have that ability to use all the things that um, were way too much for me in 2000 to help people become more connected to their emotions, deal with their thoughts and, and, and uncover all the magic that's sitting in their life. and. Um, if I think about my journey and, and where I've come from and, and where I've been to and where I am now and where I'm going, I never thought where I am right now would be possible. So what I want um, you to understand guys is that if you're in that place where you feel really, really stuck, I want you to think about my story and you know, I, I went crazy and usually what I found is that if you give up once because of a problem and you break your leg metaphorically, I broke my brain, if you, if you give up 
that is the biggest mistake that you can make because we are here for a purpose. And one thing I've learned that if you can actually create something where you um, can go beyond that struggle, go beyond that problem and go beyond what would hold you back from creating the life with, that you want, you might end up getting there too. So what we do now and, and the reason why um, I have created what I've created is that we've created a place where people can share what's really going on in, in their life without being ridiculed, hurt or destroyed by their thoughts, feelings and, and what they're doing. And what we do is we help people break the cycle and the patterns to help them uh, get to where they want to go. And um, my advice to you guys is no matter what happens, never ever give up on your dreams because you never know, you might be able to create a life beyond limits like I have. And you know, I'm still dealing with my limitations, but they don't stop me anymore. And the reason why is because my job and what I want to do is help people because I didn't know how to get the help. So I want to make sure that I give the help that I missed and um, help people become the best people they can be to liber liberate their lives towards freedom. And listeners, if you're in that place where you really want something different, you need to know that um, how to get that right help, how to get that right fit, and how to make sure that you know that you are willing to get over the line. Because one thing I know, I'm responsible for my own success. We help people become successful people, but not just successful people, connected people, aware people, uh, liberated people. Because success means nothing if you're not happy on the inside. So guys, I, I really hope that um, my story can give you a little bit of an inspiration to get you where you want to go. So our goal is to be the number one personal development company in the world, the go-to where people can go and actually get um, themselves connected, get themselves aware, get themselves able to evolve themselves into the best per possible person that they can while actually not forgetting their roots. And I'll tell you why. Because a lot of people who are, in quote, successful, they're too scared to go back to the dungeon, right? Mine's the psych ward. So they go, I've managed to conquer my demons. And what we teach is very different, is how to work with um, the magic in your trauma, the gift in your, the gift in your problems the absolute essential ingredients that actually help you become not separated from the people that you're helping. Because this is what I've seen with leaders, they've become untouchable, unreachable, because they've gone beyond you. And, they, and the reason why is they're just hiding um, their problems behind a wall and they only want you to see them as their solution. So in the academy, I let people know that I'm sad, I let people know where I'm at because I don't want people to actually think I'm any different to them. And listeners, if you're in that place where you're, um, where you're not getting um, that vibe, that help, that connection from uh, the people that are helping you, come and connect in with us because we can definitely uh, give you a deeper understanding um, and a sense of, um, of growth that you never thought possible. And um, so guys, yeah, that's my story. And uh, I'm looking forward to sharing more of my story in the future about sort of where I'm going because I've got a 20 year plan about you know, where I want to take uh, the Academy and how we're going to journey through change together. Um, we look at the Academy as a highway of change with our inner vision for the Academy is family. So we treat people um, really beautifully and we treat people uh, kindly uh, in a way that 
sometimes it can be the family atmosphere that you missed when you were, when you were growing up. So we, we build a, a completely new you out of the magic that is your problems and we help you become the actual solver of others uh, to help you become a mentor in life or even if you're in that place where a lot of people just want to come and do, do what we do for personal development so they can actually feel good about themselves and uh, that's another aspect that we share because we want people to get the best um, human experience possible in this world. So guys if, if you like my story and um, it really sort of hit a home run for you and you, you feel like someone else could do with listening to this story, it would be awesome if you could like and share this and, and, and let someone who really needs to know uh, that they can break through their limitations no matter what's happened in their life. I believe in you. One thing that I hand to people is this, if you don't have the belief, take some of mine I give a really good vibe. I was just chatting to some people today about you know the influence that I created in their life. They're very gracious about what I do. So if you're in that place where you really want that help, um, you know, give give someone the opportunity to get that help by listening to someone's breakthrough story. We all have a story from broken to breakthrough, and maybe your story is one that we can help you with to get you the breakthrough so you can actually help others in the best possible way. So thank you so much for listening. Please like and share this, share this podcast. It's going to make it bigger. It's going to make our, our academy more exposed. And if you want to find out what we do, all the links are in the show notes um, and our website, wellness, www.wellnessbreakthroughacademy.com and our podcast uh, video suite is www.wellnessbreakthroughacademypodcast.com. Thanks so much for listening and... We'll chat soon.